Yes. Now, uh, the one, the the list of the hundred best albums according to Apple Music and its pow- panel of voters dropped yesterday. It's been trending, debating. People are angry. Laura, you brought this story earlier. Yes. Well, because oh god, every <laughs> everywhere I see people are upset about the list, uh, but specifically Jermaine Dupri. Yeah. He um, did an interview on TMZ Live, but he was really upset. TMZ Live, this, yo, bro, is yes. really outside. <laughs> yes, he's upset. This is what he said. Like it's respectful to the to the genre of R and B because every artist from my era, I would say from ninety two to till now, the things that we listen to for me, even as a producer to get songwriter to get to who I am, none of those people are represented on this list. Diana Ross is not on this list. TLC is not on this list. My great friend Mariah Carey, she's not on the list. Uh I mean I could go on and on. We're not even talking about me. I'm just saying the genre of R and B seems like it was very much left off this list. The fourth side of the list is that this is Apple Music. People go to Apple Music and then they fall into a rabbit hole and just start discovering music, right? This list, to me, is almost a disabled rabbit hole because it doesn't allow you to start... Look, I, and I look. I appreciate the conversation around uh, R&B and the lack of representation on the list. Um, when you go from bottom up on the list where you have, I believe, at 95, Usher Confessions, way too low. I mean, that's a diamond album. Even though this, uh, this list wasn't about sales, obviously it's about reach. It's about a uh, concise story. It's about the songwriting. It's about the musicality of albums. And, you know, a lot of albums are just a collection of songs. They don't really have, like, it's not a project about a thing. Right. And that thing can be a society thing like Marvin Gaye. What's going on? That thing can be a, a, an analysis of your life, like Mary J. Blige, my life, which is on a list or Marvin Gaye. What's going on is on a list. But then you have an album like and I, I ask people this all the time. As big as Thriller is, what is Thriller actually about? About? Yeah, like, what's that album about? It's a collection of phenomenal records. It's one of the biggest selling... It is the biggest selling album of all time. It's about a guy who takes a girl on a date, and when they go to a movie, and the movie (laughs) is about a guy who turns into a vampire, uh, a werewolf. But then it turns out, in the end, the guy who took the girl to the movie, he is the werewolf. (laughs) <laughs> That's it. So the whole album is about that. Phenomenal. Oh, well, and then a British guy and a black guy get into a fight over a girl, but it's right. a really tame fight. It's really low key. It's a laid back kind of fight. So, but the it's but really the challenge low-key. was to the people who voted was to look at an album from that kind of lens, right? I was one of the voters, but I like I didn't pick Thriller because the challenge for me was not only which album do I like more, and they asked us not to do favorites, but I couldn't do that with Michael Jackson. But it was like, what album was concise? Off the Wall, to me, is a better album that fits what this conversation was about, right? Because Off the Wall is about Michael Jackson being young and in New York and discovering club music and being in clubs and bringing that energy into an album, right? Um, But that's not on the list. But back to what Jermaine was talking about. On the list, though, you do have Aretha Franklin, I Never Loved a Man the Way I Love You. You have uh, um, in the in the top. You have Beyonce Lemonade. People may not call out an R and B album. Uh, you have Scissors SOS on there. People may not call out an R and B album because it has some alternative records on there. Songs in the Key of Life. Stevie Wonder has two albums on the list, which is Inner Visions and Songs in the Key of Life. Um, As it should be. Um, what mm-hmm. else? Is, what else is on here? Um, uh, who's on there? Who? D'Angelo. Oh, Erica, Erica Badu's, Badu's on there. D'Angelo Voodoo's D'Angelo. on there. Um, the other challenge was when we were voting, the ask was, which albums reached beyond their specific genre and captivated a larger audience beyond the genre? Not in sales, but just in, in acclaim. That was another one of the challenges. So the ranking of it, I you know, look, we could debate what should be higher, what should be lower. I don't disagree with Jermaine. I wish there was more R&B on there. But then I would say, w- which albums? And from whom? Well, and also, keep in mind like this. Like, you're going to have different kinds of voters who are voting for their taste in music. If you're a music connoisseur, and you have, but you're, the genre that you lean towards is R&B, are you more likely to include... God bless it, but the 90s R&B that we came up on or the classic R&B that ended up making the list. So it's like just for being instance, realistic. Me and Jazz, me and my lady was debating Carl Thomas, right? Debating Carl what? T- 
Well, we were debating the greatness of, like, because we were having the same conversation about R&B albums. And she was like, I love the Carl Thomas album. I was like, but it didn't reach beyond its... It didn't reach beyond the R&B fan. Mm -hmm. And And I love the album. And it fits the criteria. But did it have the reach? Did it have the impact on how people, you know, actually write music and record music and... Did, did it speak to anything specific? I've never... I've, jazz is the first human being I've ever heard say that they listened to the full Carl Thomas album, let alone no, would Carl put it on a list. Carl Thomas album's fire, bro. You tripping. You know, Emotional? You know, yes. You know, you Crazy. know R&B album? I'll take I your word for it. I mean, R&B I love the song. I thought should have been considered. Huh. Aaliyah. One in a million. No, not even one in a million. The Aaliyah album. The one that's, that had... Oh, like, oh the Aaliyah, the self-titled album. album. Right. Try again... It had a uh, we need a resolution. Rock the boat. More than a woman, I care for you. That one, that album. That's a good. That's a good one. But then yeah, I would challenge you one. to say that. What's that album actually about? But it's yeah. I mean, but Michael Jackson's number two. So what are we talking about? Right. Yeah. So, so that part. I, that's why I think the most interesting thing to argue here is about the hip hop, right? Because like right. honestly, most of the non hip hop stuff at the top of the list did sound like top ten kind of stuff to me. When you talk about when you talk about like Beyonce, Lemonade, Nirvana, Amy Winehouse, Frank Ocean, I think was too high. Oh, oh, blonde. I, no, I mean, no. Listen, you lost your mind, you pe- you people. You, I don't know who you got for this list. Blonde t- it is it was great. The Frank Ocean thing was a thing. The mixtape followed by the album, a moment in time. The fifth greatest wow. project of all time. Wow! Shove it up your ass, <laughs> Apple. Yeah. I'll, I'll I'll go buy a droid if I have to look at this list again. Oh God! <laughs> I'll God. I'll text Green for the rest of my life for something that dumb. Blonde. Yeah, that wasn't my favorite. I know. Listen, Come on, bro. No, so, I love so, nostalgia so, Ultra, but whatever. So now, nostalgia <laughs> Ultra was whew. no nostalgia that Ultra was, was that business. That was Channel that Orange was too, though. Here. See, for me, that was the one. But but they don't even include. How about this, Frank? While we're on the Frank Ocean, they don't even include uh, nostalgia Ultra as an album. Yeah, I hear. It's not too. considered an album. No, it can't even be on there. Whatever. Well, so so boom. Let's get to the hip hop. That's on here. Um, you had thirty six chambers in the top forty. Too low. Okay. My you man. had uh, low end theory and no midnight marauders. Shame Offensive. On you. Wrong. Shame. Shame. On whoever Shame. Shame. You, had, you had Nas Illmatic. In the Nas top Illmatic 40. is low though. I mean, that's a low. considering people, considering many people consider Illmatic the greatest hip hop album of all time. Yeah, I and it's thirty some. And Laura, it's thirty some slots yeah, yeah. behind Lauren Hill. That's yeah. Woo, and behind Good Kid, Mad City. Good Kid, Mad City over Illmatic. I've been told I, w- I shouldn't refer to it as the way I just did. Take that and put it somewhere, cause that ain't it. I love guys. I'm Kendrick's. I am the official Kendrick nut hugger of radio in America. Okay. <laughs> Good Kid, Mad City ain't better than Illmatic. Nah, I'm sorry. You know who so- tell you the same thing? Kendrick Lamar. Lamar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Real talk. <laughs> uh, you had Snoop Dogg, Doggy Style at 84. 84? 84. 50 yeah, Cent, Get Rich or Die Trying was at 82. That's nasty. Marshall Mathers LP at 80. Uh, hip hop got done dirty. They said, yo, let's just mm. shove these early 2000 uh, hip hop albums in the 80s. No one will, uh, no one will worry about it. Uh, let me see here. Uh, Tupac, <laughs> All Eyes on Me, 62. Ugh. Straight out of Compton was at 70. Wow. Um, let's see here. Uh, I don't hate that for Straight Outta Compton. Uh, it, it's awesome, but I said Beastie Boys' fine. Paul's Boutique was at 48. Uh, that, uh, that's pretty low for the way people feel about the Paul's Boutique album in general. How many different sort of barriers musically that album crossed. That Paul's Drake Boutique. Drake Take Care was 47. Oh, sorry, you said you said Paul's Boutique was what? 48. And you said, I'm sorry, you said Take Drake Care was what? Would take Care was 47. Yo, listen, call Tim Cook, tell him to resign. <laughs> Tim Cook needs to resign. Equimini, Equimini, forty-one. By the way, by the way, no speaker box left below. But Equimini was that one. But yes, that's the one. If you're I, gonna go one, but but I, I like feel ATL you. I feel you because right. that one is like the diamond speaker album. Speaker box love below changes. is the big album, but also. It's a double album. It's really two yeah. albums. It's like two, what is it's it? two solo albums. It's, it's two weird. solo albums it's put together. Like what is? I remember it? when Equim and I came out. People were like, "What is this weirdo?" Remember, people didn't really automatically accept it. No, no it's wh- fire for me off top. But yes, you're I, right, Lord. One of my favorite albums ever. Uh, no, Big, Ready to Die, 
uh, Notorious B.I.G. Uh, 32. You know, no big pun? Just asking. Wow. Oh, yeah, no big, no love for big pun. No big pun? Just asking. No, 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 just asking for a friend. No big pun. The Low End Theory, 29. That's the highest tribe is 29. 29. Uh, Chronic, 19, Dr. Dre. Jay-Z Blueprint, 13. It is funny, though, when you make the... Po- By the way, what what's up with... Yo, 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 let me talk to y'all for a second, man. I love Jay, man. Jay, Jay, is, Jay is a goat. Maybe the goat, okay? He's the man. And Blueprint is up there for my favorite... Probably my favorite Jay-Z album. Blueprint was how many slots higher than Illmatic? Blueprint was... You said 13? You said Illmatic was what now? 39. 30 something. Oh. Yo, man, Zane Lowe, turn in your your, your key card. <laughs> why? I need, why? N- why? Nades- why? Nadesco, write an apology letter. Yeah. Low key, <laughs> go on vacation. Eddie, Sorry. go Eddie, go away for a while. Y'all need to sit down. What? Come on, blueprint that far ahead. E- Shotty, are you not from Queens? You hear what I'm saying? <laughs> Is no look. I'm, I'm with you, bro. It's dirty. <laughs> it well, and I, and I'll take you a step further. Yeah. You know, I, I can't even. I can't even 10. argue. I can't even argue rankings <laughs> because I'm still stuck on the fact that people are upset. We're talking about 100 albums of all <laughs> genres, all time. I know you can have a visceral reaction to a number next to an album, and you feel like it should be higher. I can't get beyond the fact. That we this was narrowing down all albums all time. No, it's impossible. Like what's, it's ridiculous. what's the difference? What are we even saying the difference is between number eighty two no, well, and number fifty two? What okay, are we but, even saying? But that's the point. So so hear me out. You're right, one hundred percent. Except for when you make the decision to and I get it was done by voting technically I don't know what happened I wasn't inside the room but I wasn't even inside and you right so I'm assuming it was voting but when you say that something is ahead of something that reads as better than now, no I I hear what you're saying so so blue like for example so blueprint ahead of illmatic as Crazy. much as we love blueprint I've never heard a hip hop fan in history say blueprint oh that's better than illmatic never have I heard a soul say that I'm sorry. I, I just I haven't. No, so it I, ends I'm up not looking crazy. You. I was actually thinking, have I ever heard a soul say that? And I don't know if I have either. But and I don't you, even. And you, but and by the way, I don't even know if you would even compare them. Me neither. But like, right. Good Kid, Mad City ahead of Illmatic ahead of. But that's recency bias. Theory. That's recency bias. That is one thousand percent. The panel of voters had people under thirty on it. A lot. Uh, you know how I felt when I found out Taylor Swift was ahead of Beach Boys' Pet Sounds. A musical, like you could argue, Pet Sounds is not only a gigantic album that sold really well; it like changed the way that producers produce music. That's right. Like, not only Sha- not only would it have songs that on Whitish Wednesday, Shawnee Culture would go, "That's the Beach Boys." Like, right. it's that no, it's big. Qu- it's quintessential. It but, has, it, it has but then if sound. you but then if you get in the car and you at right now in 2024 you turn that pet sounds up to 11 in your car and you blast it you're going to go this still holds up right now this is well, fire and, and and so i think what happened with this apple music uh 100 best once again is you're asking people who don't necessarily connect in that way to everything the same right which is how you get a thriller at number 2 and a lauren at number 1 Right, you know, there's people who just don't hold regard for those things the same, and that's going to happen over time as we go on in history, right? Or even if we were to go backwards in history, you would see things of uh, pop up to the top because the people voting were closer to whatever that thing is, and as we get farther away from things. People who are closer to newer things hold those things in higher regard because they hit them different. It's all emotional connection, but connection. But Ibra, for transparency, because I know a lot of people are like, "Who can you give us a, a general of who voted for this?" Let's so I don't know all the journalists. Um, right. I obviously I know all the editors, the people who make playlists, of Apple Music, all of right, those right, people. Right. And what then else? there were celebrities like Nile Rodgers or Maggie Rodgers, who's a who's a songwriter. If you don't know who Nile Rodgers is, you shouldn't have an out. You shouldn't have an opinion on music. Period. In the discussion, go sit down for the rest of your life. Um, uh, the RZA, uh, Pharrell, Billie Eilish, uh, Alicia Keys, uh, 
Um, I mean, Billie Eilish is a genius, but she's like 23 years old, bro. I love yeah. Billie Eilish. She's 23 years old. I mean, I'm sure she's dug in a lot. She's probably a bad example. She was homeschooled, nerding out, <laughs> learning about music her with her, her brother. Her brother and her produced music together. Yeah, so I get Bryce it. I get it. But, like, we probably have a different feeling about albums from the 90s. Um, I'm trying to think. Oh, yeah, for sure. You know, her her passion level for the 90s is nowhere near her passion level for the 2000s. Right, right, right. You know what I mean? But I think that's what we were trying to accomplish by having a, a, a variety of individuals chime in on this. Because what you didn't want yeah, it's important. was, why, why would this list be interesting if it was just people over 40 voting? Right. No, no, you couldn't. You couldn't leave stuff off. Uh, right. But the, also the hard part is time is important. You know, like, time is important. Like, Cass and I, I think we're arguing with some people who are trying to decide. We brought this up the other day. You know, is Not Like Us a classic? And we were saying, well, we got to give it time. Like, right, let, right. let's see let's see if Not Like Us is still a thing in X amount of time. Um, so it's, it's hard with the recent albums. Even 1989 by Taylor Swift. Like, there are these albums that still need a little bit of time to see what they mean. Before we can really put it next to and ahead of albums that have stood the test of time for 50 years. That's right. I, I think that's important. You know what I mean? Listen, uh, if you want to go look at the whole list, you could just uh, go in Apple Music if you have a subscription. And it was it genius. I'll say this. It, it got me very interested in Apple Music this week. I was, I was waiting for the next thing just to be, just yo, to be and annoyed. Then, yo, and I'm gonna just, just so y'all know how Rosenberg is Wyatt. While he was say, he admitted he was waiting, Sean. Mm -hmm. Literally every day in the comment when I would post about whatever the next 10 was, I'm done with this list. Throw <laughs> it away. <laughs>